If you think the color grading tool inside of Lightroom Classic is just for making a cinematic look, you might be missing out on some of the hidden uses of this powerful tool. Did you know it can also adjust tone and contrast? Have you ever used it on black and white or a faded image to make a vintage look? Well, stick around. You're in the right place because in this video, I'm going to show you how to do all of that and more. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you're ready to learn all about the color grading tool, let's begin. Before I show you the tool, let's talk about the difference between color correction and color grading. When you're in the Lightroom basic panel, color correction is done with the white balance tools and sliders at the top. You can see that I'm adjusting the tint of the picture. Generally, when you're doing color correction, you're attempting to match the color and tone of the original scene and keep it natural looking. Color grading, on the other hand, is completely different. This is a process where you manipulate the colors on purpose to create a specific mood or look for your image. It usually has more creativity and adds more drama to your image. Let's take a look at some examples of what color grading looks like. Here are some Lightroom presets that do some color grading. You can see that as I hover over them, they're completely changing the look and style of the image. You can use different tools to do color grading, including camera profiles, the HSL panel, and curves, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to focus on the color grading tool. So let's see what else it can do for your images. Number one, you can use the color grading tool on black and white images as well. You may not have thought of that. Let me show you how it works. When you have an image that is already converted into black and white, as I've done with this one, just open the color grading tool. The first thing you'll see are these little icons at the top here, and this will just allow you to change how you work with the tool itself. This first panel allows you to adjust the midtones, shadows, and highlights separately, but all on one panel. The next three are each individual one, as I mentioned, shadows, midtones, and highlights separately. This is the way I like to use this tool most of the time. The last one is overall. I'm going to start with this one on the black and white image. There's two ways to adjust the color. You can use the sliders at the bottom, hue, saturation, and luminance. We'll come back to that one in a minute. Or you can just click anywhere on the color wheel. You'll notice that as I move it around, it changes the color or tint of the image. So when you're adjusting it overall like this on a black and white image, it allows you to do things like make a sepia tone. So choose something in the yellow range like that. You'll notice that as I move it around, the sliders below also move to correspond to the same hue and saturation that I'm dialing in on the circle. The luminous slider allows you to adjust the overall brightness, in this case of the entire image. So if you find you need to brighten it a little bit after adding the color, you can do so right here. So that's the first way to apply it on a black and white image. Simply choose a color and the amount of saturation that you want. To reset, just double click on the word adjust and all the sliders will go back to zero. Another option with a black and white image is to create what's called a duotone. Click on this first icon here to open the shadows options and then choose a color. In this case, I'm gonna go with something on the blue side of the color spectrum. Then choose highlights. This is the third one. I'm gonna choose yellow or something on the opposite side. Now you can see that I've created what's called a duotone. So duo meaning two, and I've got two colors creating this blue and yellow tint to the black and white image. But you can make the colors anything you want. I can shift the whites to more of a pink tone. I can shift the highlights to more of an orange tone or green. The sky's the limit, you get to choose. But we're not done yet. There's also a third option, which is midtones. I'm gonna go back to blue for the shadows. 
This time I'm going to choose a pinkish tone for the midtones and change the highlights to yellow. Now you can see I've created what's called a tritone. So three colors comprising this image. This allows you to get extra creative with your black and white images. And remember, if you're happy with the settings, you can always save it as a preset. Just go over to the preset panel, click the plus to create a preset, and make sure that when you are saving it, you only check off the color grading option. You don't want this preset to change any other settings, just color grading and give it a name, like so. Remember the first option, if you want to be able to see all three at once, just choose this one. And now you can see the three circles and you can adjust the midtones here, the highlights here, and the shadows here. So if you prefer to see what you're working on, use this icon. This brings us to tip number two using the color grading tool, which is you can create a cross process look. If you're not familiar with that term, it comes from the days of film where you took one type of film and put it in the opposite type of chemistry. For example, if you took negative film and processed it in chemicals for slide film or the opposite slide film processed in negative film chemistry, you would get a completely different look than the film was intended for. So that was called cross processing. Now we have way more options to do it digitally and a lot of control over how it looks. So let's see how we can use the color grading tool to make a cross processed look. I'm going to go back to doing each one individually and I'm going to start with the shadows. I want something sort of in this blue range here and I'm going to go fairly saturated just so that it's more obvious and we can see it. With the midtones, I'm going to go somewhere in this cyan range. And on the highlights, let's go opposite, maybe even red or pink. So if we get some pink tone in there, now we've got something very different looking. If it's too saturated, I can just dial any of them down a little bit. Can you see how it's really similar to the tritone that I just applied on the black and white image, but now we're applying it to the base of a color image. And it creates a look of sort of upside down, topsy-turvy world. You can get really creative with this kind of look just by shifting the colors around. Let's see what else we can do. Let's go red on the shadows, orange in the midtones, and let's go the opposite in the highlights. Now we have something completely different. When you're on the overall panel and you can see all three color wheels, you also have two options down here, blending and balance. Blending allows you to shift the colors based on what you've chosen up here. And balance goes more towards highlights or more towards the shadows. So play with those sliders as well once you get the colors dialed in. Tip number three using the color grading tool is that you can use the luminance sliders to adjust the tone and the contrast of the image without touching the color at all. Let's see how it works. I've got a plain grayscale image here and what I'm going to do is one by one work with the luminance sliders for shadows, midtones, and highlights. If you take the luminance slider to the left, it's going to darken the shadows. So watch this area of the image. See that? So it's darkened those tones towards the left of the scale. If you go the other way, it's going to lighten. So I'm going to leave it towards the darker end of the scale. The midtone slider works the same. If you take it to the left, it's going to darken the midtones or the center part of this image. Watch as I take it to the left and then to the right. So dark, light. I'm going to brighten it in this case. The highlights works the same way. So to the right is brighter and you'll notice that these tones start to blend together and to the left is darker. Now I want you to be aware of a couple of things here because if you bring the luminous slider of the white down to the left and the shadows up to the right, you'll actually eliminate pure white and pure black in your image. 
which is not a bad thing. It's going to give you a different look, but just be aware of that because if you've done that, you can't actually get black or white in your image anymore. Even if I take the black slider all the way to the left and the white slider all the way to the right, you'll notice that the histogram isn't touching the edge anymore. Even if I try and do the same thing with the tone curve, I could pull it all the way in, but you see what's happening? Everything is just piling up on that part where it's blocked off. So it's like there's a stoppage, not allowing it to be fully black. That's the color grading luminance slider. So be careful if you're using this one, if you're brightening the shadows or darkening the highlights, not to go too far. Keep it on the subtle side. Let's go back where I left that one. And I'm gonna make the highlights a little bit brighter. So let's see what it's doing. Just press and hold the eyeball to see the before and after of this tool. Well, that's all well and good on this example, but how does it work on an actual image? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to do a copy. And in this case, I'm going to copy just the color grading. And let's paste it back onto this image of the graffiti wall. So I'm going to paste. Et voila, you can see the contrast of the image has been increased as was the previous one. Let's try it on the black and white image. Now keep in mind that because I had already applied some color grading to this image, so when I do the paste, it's going to write over the tritone settings. There we go. See that? So just keep that in mind that if you're making any presets with color grading and you're using the luminance sliders, you need to put it together with one preset. Because if you make one with for color and one for the luminance sliders, one will overwrite the other. Once again, you can see the before and after, and that's being created by the luminance sliders being affected, which are the ones at the bottom down here. I created a couple of snapshots to show you some colors that I made using the color grading tool. Here's one that has blue shadows, magenta or pink midtones, and yellow highlights. I'm going to copy these settings, just color grading, and let's put that on the black and white image. You can see how that applied. If I apply it to the color image, you can see that it maintains the original color and applies the color grading on top. Going back to my grayscale image, there's the other set of colors that I created. And I have one more bonus tip for you. But before I show you that, let me ask you a question. Did you know that the color grading tool was so versatile? Do you think you're gonna be using it more often after watching this video? Let me know in the comment area below if you found some valuable tips in this video. And remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. The bonus tip is that you can apply these things to make a faded or vintage look that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. To do that, I'm going to take this color image and just dial the saturation down. This is not the best way to make a pure black and white image, but it is a great way to do this faded vintage look. If you want a little bit more color, just bring the vibrant slider up. Once you've got the color dialed down a little bit so it's muted tones, go down to the color grading tool. And for this tip, what I usually do is only work on the shadows. I like to create sort of a sepia tone underneath the faded black and white. So I'll bring the color up in the yellow to orange range to make it look a little bit more antique. We can adjust the luminous slider while we're here to give it more contrast. And if you want, you can adjust the highlights and give it that yellow tint as well. From here, you can just tweak it until you're happy. Remember, you can also copy and paste. This time, I'm going to also copy the saturation and the vibrance. And I'm going to paste it onto this image. And now I have a faded antique version of this one. To finish things up, I think I'll save it as a preset before I move on. If you've enjoyed this video and you've learned a lot and you'd like to learn more about Lightroom Classic, check out my full course, Lightroom for Photographers. You get my raw files to practice with and follow along with each of the lessons. If you want to watch another video here on YouTube, 
click one on the screen now. Until next time, take care and keep editing those photos.